Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a really fun table runner project for you today. This is called Drunkard's Path Table Runner. It's a cut loose pattern. So I'm gonna give you kind of an overview. Um, this is a pattern you can pick up. Or if you love Local Honey by Figo Fabrics as much as I did when I saw the pattern in the fabrics, I thought this was a perfect table runner to display for spring all throughout summer. I just love that you get to see so many different fabrics across the table runner. I couldn't stop designing with that one. So we also did the tenderness pin cushion. So how fun to be able to coordinate in your home. And I just love the geometry of select of prints when you fussy cut them. And this is such a pretty project. So kits are available of that and of course, for the table runner as well. So we're gonna dive right into that. Um, if you're picking up the kit, of course, that's gonna have everything you need, including your backing. The only thing you'll need to add will be your batting. But let me show you how easy this is. You do not need to be an accomplished quilter to do this project at all, easy peasy. So your kit will have, of course, all these beautiful fabrics from Local Honey. And we'll also be using some fusible, I love that. So it makes it so easy to be able to have this piece down to the background. It's ironed down, so then we can come in with our four-piece thread set, which is an option for you, um, not required by any means, but those are the threads that we use to stitch down our applique shape. So it just blended in uh, nicely, super affordable to pick that up. But I like that that is down to the background. Now that beautiful curve, is made possible here with the Roundup tool from Creative Grid. So I'm gonna show you how to use that tool. These other ones are optional. This one you wanna pick up if you're gonna be grabbing that kit or the pattern. Maybe you're gonna be using your fabric from home. Be sure to pick up that tool. So fabrics in your kits, um, you're just gonna grab those fabrics. And the first thing, like I mentioned, is you're going to be putting some fusible on the back of these to secure that down to your white fabric. So I'm just gonna grab some fusible here and they talk about some specific measurements and I'm just going to go ahead and cut around that right now. That's gonna help us get a really good start on this project by having our fusible already cut to that exact shape. So I'm just gonna iron that down and I like to of course use that fusible on a medium heat is what's recommended for heat and bond light. Maybe you're using a different fusible product at home. But I like too that the size of our fusible and the size of our fabric is a little bit, I, I've got more fabric than I need. So if you've got like a certain flower you're trying to capture, you have a little bit of an opportunity to fussy cut. So on the back of your fabric, I'll put this over here for just for the moment, you can just say, you know, I really, really like that B and I wanna bias my fabric or my fusible over here. You see what I mean? You've got a little bit of wiggle room on the fabric in your kit. So you might wanna give that some thought if there's a certain spot you really want to accentuate. And I really like that B now that I've said that out loud. <laughs> I'm gonna go bias my fusible over here, just like that and iron that down. And you'll repeat that, you'll get two uh, squares out of each of the fabrics in your kit. Now this is a charm pack friendly project. We just chose to use two of the same from the Figo collection. If you have a charm pack at home, or maybe there's one on the website you want, where every single one of these is different, go for it. In that case, you'd just be getting one out of that. It's a really versatile pattern. Um, depending on what you want your table runner to look like if you're not gonna be using the local honey fabrics. Now from this, we will go ahead and cut those down to a little bit of a smaller size so that we now have this size of our fabric with the fusible on the back. Once you have that, this is when the tool will come into play. And there's two sides of this you have this side and then the smaller one. We're gonna be using the smaller one. So you have this nice line up here, just like that. Now, I know as tempting as it is to cut multiples at a time, this arc and this position of the ruler is very important. 
We're using a 28 millimeter. I'm normally using a 45 millimeter, but when I'm trying to get around a fairly tight curve, the 28 millimeter is a better choice. Pick up those um, replacement blades. I think we have two packs and five packs. Pick them up at the same time. I definitely find I need to replace my blade more frequent on a 28 millimeter just because the diameter is so small that the blade is getting more use, more rotations. So give a good press and cut slowly around the shape until you have that. You'll have your background fabric uh, cut to the size in the pattern. And this is what makes this such a cool um, design. And by the way, this is from, I just want to make sure we're making, we're giving credit here to the designer, Terry Atkinson, Yellow Brick Row. We've all made those quilts. How many have we made? This is her pattern. So I want to make sure I give credit to her. She's an amazing designer. We'll just go ahead and remove the fusible off the back of that. And for some of the squares, you'll be setting this right into that corner, exactly in that corner. But on some of those, notice here, there's an offset. This is our seam allowance. And I think that's what makes it such a cool design. This one's sitting right in that seam allowance, and this one is sitting off of that. So you will, of course, refer to your pattern for those measurements. Grab whatever marking tool you want, and you're just kind of establishing, I'm just throwing out, kind of just establishing kind of a 90 degree corner, right? That, and you want to refer to the pattern for that exact distance. But in this instance, see this one we're going to sit right in our corner. In fact, I'm just going to iron that down so you're seeing that. That is so cool with that B in the corner. Isn't that beautiful like that? It's so pretty. And this one, same thing, remove the paper. The fusible makes it so wonderful. I'm not painting anything. It's locking right into that. Now place that right where those lines are, exactly where those lines are. You might even wanna do that right where your pressing mat is so you don't have to move anything. Once you're satisfied with that position, Go ahead and iron that down, which will also remove any friction lines. And now you're ready to use the thread sets to stitch them down. So here's one where we have to stitch all the way around that because that is exposed. This one is out of the seam allowance. For the ones that are in the seam allowance, you only need to do the arc, so I love that. Of course, our pattern is going to give you the arra arrangement that we want, noting that this is just a white square here and up here, and everything else has this beautiful kind of cascading kind of quarter circles, I guess I'd call them. And of course, that will be giving you a layout guidance as well as pressing instructions. So you can see this is a fun one that comes together fast and made so easy with that Creative Grid tool. So be sure to pick up your kits, maybe even our pincushion kit, Subscribe and I'll see you soon on another video.